Well, uh, let's take a few moments and look at the biblical text in. We're going to preach from the book of Colossians, chapter number one. Uh, and we're going to start at verse number nine, Colossians chapter number one. Now, this past week, uh, I was in uh, Columbus, Ohio at the Churches of God in Christ uh, AIM convention. AIM is their midsummer convention. AIM is an acronym that stands for Auxiliaries in Mission. Uh, it's one of our Pentecostal denominational churches, and they had thousands of people from all across the country. Uh, these are the sanctified folk, the Holy Ghost folk. We came out of, you know, that, that kind of tradition. Uh, our church, you know, is, is bathed in that as our foundation. And so I was there, though, to help uh, continue to uplift and to amplify the need for us to work on issues related to gun violence and issues related to ending mass incarceration and criminalization, talk about voting. And so it was a great time. Uh, while I was there, I got invited uh, by some other friends uh, from the state of Ohio to a meeting. And they had clergy leaders from all across the state. Uh, and they were meeting to think a little bit about what is the responsibility of the church in this moment to be faithful in light of all of the challenges we're facing. And there was a, you know, a robust conversation around COVID-19. There was a robust conversation around depression and anxiety and self-harm that uh, many of our young people and our congregation members and our communities are experiencing in light of all the grief that has really overwhelmed our society. Uh, in light of the last two years of, of COVID-19, and then the ubiquitous nature of death and harm and violence uh, that is perpetrated in our communities. We had a conversation about voting. We had a conversation about the rise of Christian nationalism, the, the white Christian nationalists in our country that are doing you know, all kind of wicked and, th and crazy things. And, 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 and so you know, I'm listening to the conversation, and 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 as I'm sitting in this 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 church, um, it was it was it was called uh, oh it was a Baptist church. Now I can't even remember the name of the Baptist church, but it was a Baptist church. One of the one of the pastors uh, said, "This is the oldest church in the city of Columbus." And I was sitting there. We were in the basement, and I was just started to sit there, and and you know I, I I felt like the Spirit just spoke to me. And, and just said, you know, uh, uh, McBride, you, you are, you are and, 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 and a number of, of you in this room are sitting in chairs or, or in a room or on the grounds where for hundreds of years church folk have been sitting asking God for healing, asking God for strength, asking God for wisdom. So when I got up to speak, I, 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 was, I, I was so moved by that, I just asked everybody, I just want you just to take a moment and just to think about that the, the places where your feet are standing or sitting or, 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 or hanging out, where we're hanging out, that hundreds of years ago, there was someone as well literally in this basement, probably under candlelight, because there may not have been electricity back then. And they were asking God for the very same things we're asking God for today. Asking God for healing. Asking God for direction. Asking God for hope. Asking God for God's power and strength. And I just invited them just to close your eyes. And they all closed their eyes. And one of the older uh, faith leaders, uh, pastors, he, he, he had a tear stream down his, his face. And, and I invited him. I, I just asked him afterwards, what? What was, what was that moment about for you? He said, you know, I never thought that I would be fighting the same fights that my grandparents fought. He's 70 some years old. And so that meant his grandparents was probably around <laughs> during that time. And it really caused me to think about the issue of legacy. It caused me to think about this idea that what we are doing today, we are actually carrying on that which was handed to us by another set of faithful people. That we do not exist in a vacuum. That we do not exist as self-made individuals. But that for 
decades, dare I say centuries, or even as far as millennia, we who follow the ways of Jesus are literally uh, uh, following that which has been handed to us by some faithful people along the way. And I want you to think about what does it mean for us to think about legacy. As a church, we're 17 years in under my leadership. Uh, it's, it's, it's worth saying that we're, we're likely around in our 49th year uh, of, a, of a church being here since 1973, 73, 72. And so we, 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 we can say that there's at least been some decades. Somebody say amen. I mean, I haven't been here for all the decades. I mean, there may have been one or two here for most of the decades, right? But the idea still remains that you have your own story about legacy. That 17 years of ministry here at The Way, that is one part of legacy. But you have your own story and responsibility about legacy. Amen. Uh, the Holloman family, a legacy family, a family that has put seeds out into the world that have yielded great fruit. I see some teachers and educators in the room, legacy, folks that you have impacted for one or two years of their life. And you don't know how that seed of kindness, of ministry, of love has literally caused them to be literally alive today. How many can look back in your life and think of a couple people that, you know, I, it, it, when I look in the rearview mirror, God sent them to my life right at the right moment. Anybody, any honest folk, amen? God sent, I mean, I was kind of shaky. Yes, <laughs> Praise God. Even with good parents, even with an advanced degree from a great university, how I many know oh God sometimes had to plant people strategically in our lives to make sure that we were always working, living, and realizing legacy? And that's what this passage of scripture is really about today. It is about the legacy of the work we are called to do. Colossians chapter number, uh, uh, chapter number one, verse number nine. I'm going to start right there. This is Paul. He is talking to the church that he helped to plant, to start in the city of Colossus. And this is what Paul says to them. For this reason, since the day we heard of your ministry, uh, of your great witness, of your great uh, work and commitment to God. Paul says, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you. Oh, there's a song we used to sing growing up says, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. Then, you know, we, you know, all us in black church, you know, we like uh, remixes, you know. So, that, you know, I, I don't know if the original writer said, uh, Jesus prayed for me, but we start saying that Jesus prayed for me. <laughs> Had me on their mind. Took the time. To, I'm so glad he prayed. I'm so glad he prayed for me. That somebody was praying for them. Paul is saying, listen, I am praying for you. And what am I praying? I'm asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Verse number 10. Why? So that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing to him. As you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God, may you be made strong with all the strength that comes from God's glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. For God has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Just come on, say thanks be to God. 
So I, I just want to take about 10, 15 more minutes that just to talk about this, this, this idea that this is our legacy. Amen. This is our legacy. Come on and bow your heads and let's just pray. God, we want to say thank you for the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide your word in our hearts so we won't sin against you and let the preaching and the teaching of your word be infused with your power from on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of the Lord say amen. 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 Say it again. This is our legacy. Say that. This is our legacy. Now, again, what is so powerful and important for us to think about in this moment is the idea that we are always given something in our hands that we ourselves may not have produced, but we are called to steward. We are called to steward it, to take care of it, to, to cultivate it. God gives you something you did not create, but something you are responsible for. God will give you uh, 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 some talents. God will give you some opportunities. God will open some doors that no one can shut. And in those moments, you may find yourself stuck between what is to be and what is. The in-between times, if you will. Anybody ever been stuck in an in-between moment? You know that you've been given something to do, but what you have does not match what you have been hoping for, the, the result that you have been working for. Uh, if you're like me, you know, uh, I, 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 I wish I could just kind of fast forward to the end. Uh-huh. Especially when I know what the end result is going to be, and it's going to be a good result for me. Like, okay, God, can, can we just skip all this unnecessary? <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I've, I've, I've already done that part. I've done the struggle. I've done the crime. I've done the therapy. I've done the sacrifice. And God, I, I'm just ready for the payoff. <laughs> Any payoff folks up in here? Like, I don't, I don't, you know, this other stuff is overrated. Right? But how many of you know that part of legacy making is connected to the journey to the destination. I mean, what makes legacy so rich is the experiences along the way. I mean, I've met folk who claim to be a part of some uh, uh, sector of work, but I can tell if they've taken the shortcuts or if they've taken the hard road. How many of you know shortcuts mean that you're trying to cut corners. You're trying to avoid the parts of the journey that make it difficult. When I was in uh, every level of school, you know, I was one of these folk that, that, that loved to wait to the last minute to study for certain exams. Not all of them, praise God, but certain. <laughs> and I was one of these people who had the gift of gab, I was told. That if I could just, you know, I could hang on to a piece. They used to tell us, you know, I'm going to give you all some game. I'm going to give you all some free game. You know, all you just in school and whatnot. You're still trying to figure out how to cut some corners. They said, read the introduction to every book. Read the first two pages and the last two pages of every chapter. And take two chapters and read them all the way through. And if you did that, you would probably be able to hang in any discussion at a, you know, basic, you know, level of, uh, what's the word, uh, of, 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 of understanding, competency. But if you want to become an expert, you got to go down a rabbit hole with some of this stuff. You got to read, and you got to look at the footnotes, and you got to read the footnotes, you got to understand where the writer was, who they were quoting. And, you know, for certain topics and certain, you know, subjects, I just didn't have that kind of passion. For physics, I didn't care about that stuff. It's like, no, just tell me the formulas I need to learn. But for history, but for things around theology or philosophy, I love to go down a rabbit hole. 
and I can hang. I get in some deep waters with people, you know. And I love to like translate it into my own kind of San Francisco Hunters Point type, you know, language. You know what I mean? So you know, they be in there talking all stuffy, and I'd be like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? You know what's up? You know? And they'd be like, you know, having a brain kind of dissonance. Cause like, how can someone who talks like you be so smart? And I'd be like, I got legacy. Praise God. You don't understand. Mm hmm. But you have met folks who have not taken the hard road. And so their advice, their insight can only go so far. Huh? How many of you know that the legacy we have as God's people, uh, we sing it every first Sunday, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley that there is no height or depth there is no no wideness that can extend past the legacy we have and why is that important because we are being called to carry that legacy in our families in our vocations in our ministries in our lives we are being called to lean into the depths the heights even the expansiveness of this legacy of God's work in us and in the world. And I want you to know, child of God, that this legacy is a blessed legacy. It's something that if you and I take seriously, can literally transform the trajectory of your life of your family's life, of our community's life. And I'm not talking about a legacy that uh, seeks to inscribe and, and rebuild that which God, through the inbreaking of God's kingdom, is seeking to tear down. How many know that when Jesus came, Jesus wasn't coming because the world was okay? <laughs> Man, if the world was okay like Jesus, you know, uh, uh, was, was, was imagining in eternity, Jesus would have just stayed right on up there in eternity. When God created the world, God said it was good. Jesus came because it wasn't good no more. <laughs> it was like something. What, what y'all take with my good stuff? Y'all done turn my good stuff into a mess. So Jesus comes. Why? Because it's no longer what he intended it to be. Aren't you glad that when your life ceases to be what God intended it to be, Jesus shows up. Woo. Lord, I, 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 maybe I'm preaching myself this morning. I, I, I'm so glad that when my life gets off track, all of a sudden I become conscious that Jesus is hanging out. Amen. When my life starts to take a nasty turn, it's not as if Jesus wasn't there in the good times. It's just I wasn't always conscious of Jesus. Uh huh. How, how, how many know when things are going good, amen, you there faking Jesus. But when things are going pretty bad, you calling out for Jesus. <laughs> uh -huh. a, a, a thank you, Jesus, and a help me, Jesus, has a different kind of ring to it. And you must realize that Jesus' presence in our life through the power of the Spirit is inviting you and I to lean into legacy, a legacy worth holding on to. I would not throw away the legacy of faith just because times are difficult. But the first thing that the scriptures say is worth you and I uh, living into this legacy. Uh, verse number 10 says that you and I should lead lives to live our lives worthy of the Lord. Somebody's hollow. Live my life worthy of the Lord. Say that. Live my life worthy of the Lord. I want you to know that not all life living is equal. <laughs> uh, some of us can live life and it's not worth a lot. There's no judgment, but you, you can, if you would just be honest with yourself, you say, you know, some of the things and seasons in my life, I can take everything I've done in a season and I can put it on the table and I can be like, what was I doing with my life? Amen, amen. It, it, you, how about this? Don't, don't do your whole life because that, that, that may make you feel too bad. Just say, what did I do with my life this week? Did, did, did I maximize this week of my life? How much love did I hand out this week? 
We always measuring our life in this capitalistic economy through the amount of money we accrue. But how many know that you can measure the impact and the worthiness of your life through other measurements besides money? Hello, somebody. Amen. Uh, how much love did I give out this week? How much peace was I able to hold on to this week? Because how many know holding on to your peace is a part of you living your life worthy of the Lord? How much healing have I been able to lean into this week? A life worthy of the Lord. What did I do to work on my relationships with God, with one another, and with others, and with myself? How did I work out this week? How did I eat this week? Did I get enough sleep? Did I pray enough? Did I go to Bible study? Did I listen to enough worship wholesome music to balance out, you know, all the other stuff I be listening to? <laughs> Somebody say amen. Live in your life that is worth. Have I hugged my children enough this week? Have, 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 I, have I served those who are in need this week? Have I paused and just take, taken a moment to look at creation this week? How much have I heard God speak to me this week? Don't you know that is a life? That is worth living as pleasing to God. And sometimes we make a life worth, uh, a life that is worthy of the Lord, uh, a whole list of things, rather than you just being. And living, not in the presence of God as a state of paralysis, but living and being in the world. Wherever I go, I know I'm living a life worthy of the Lord. That when I walk into the room, everybody knows, Lord, have mercy. Here comes a life that is worthy of the Lord. They come in with love in their hands. They come in with forgiveness in their hands. They come with healing in their hands. Pat yourself on the chest, say, let me live a life worthy of the Lord. That is what it means to have legacy. Legacy is about your life being reflective of the life of the Lord at work in us. It is not about you, you know, having big houses and cars and 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 buildings and 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 accomplishments that the world celebrates. That is some folks legacy, but how many of you know you're living into a legacy that some folks may never know your name. But you and they who you've impacted will always point back and say, "Man, there was a seed planted in my life that has literally produced a harvest of legacy. Amen. The second thing that the scripture says about uh, our legacy I want to lift up is that you and I must bear fruit in every good work. Somebody say bear some fruit. Bear some fruit. Come on, say it again. Bear some fruit. Bear. Listen, not in any kind of work. But in every good work, somebody say good work. Say it again, good work. That, that means that there's some bad work out here. That means that some of us need to challenge ourselves. Am I bearing fruit in good work or some not so good work? Work that has a trajectory not of life giving but of death stealing. Work that does not produce uh, uh, anxiety but work that produces peace. Work that does not produce harm, but work that produces a little bit of healing and well-being. That we are being called to bear fruit in every good work. And that's why when I was sitting in the church basement of this Baptist church in Columbus, Ohio, I began to think of the, 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 the members of that church who may, uh, in some part of the life of that church, was, was out picking cotton. Or they may have been uh, addressing uh, the, the kind of death that came from the terror of the Ku Klux Klan. Or they may have had to deal with the kind of fire bombs that were lunged at them when they were trying to integrate the schools. Or maybe they had to deal with the redlining in their city that did not allow their own members to own houses. 
Or maybe they were trying to figure out how to get their children through the crack cocaine era of the 80s and the 90s. Or maybe they're alive right now and we're trying to figure out how to duck and weave and dodge the Christian nationalism that's raising up in this country. But I want you to know that at every moment of this church's history, there were some people there who were attempting to bear fruit in good work. And I'm so glad that you're a part of a church community, that at every moment of our existence, we're not perfect, but we've been trying to bear some good fruit and some good work. And you are part of that fruit. We are part of the good work that God has been trying to do. And if you're like me, I'm glad that I am God's work in progress. If you're like me, I'm glad that God is not done with me yet. If you're like me, I'm glad that God's not done with us yet. Uh, because they used to sing a song that when God gets through with me, I'm going to come out like pure gold. Uh, anybody in here that want to have some bling bling uh, that looks like the reflection of your life? Uh, that God, you're going to finish a product with me that's going to make everybody say that had to be God. I know they had an education from Cal, but that Cal education didn't produce that. I know they went uh, to the best schools and, and they had uh, the, the, the best resources, but it wasn't the resources that produced that. There's something divine about the legacy and the impact that God wants to do in our lives. Uh, and I want you to know, child of God, that if you and I can be clear about the legacy of God, uh, then we can get down to verse number 13, which I totally appreciate that our legacy is that God rescued us from the gloom, the power of gloom and darkness. Uh, I want you to know that my greatest legacy, uh, your greatest legacy, our greatest legacy uh, is that we serve a God. Uh, who's able to rescue us, uh, rescue us from our powers that, that from the power of darkness that tries to paralyze us, uh, rescue us from the powers of sickness that try to afflict us, uh, to rescue us from the, the injustice in the world that would try to make you feel like you're less than God created you, uh, that you have a legacy uh, and that legacy comes from above uh, the world may not see the worth of your legacy uh, but it's up to us in this house uh, it's up to us in the virtual church uh, it's up to us with our families uh, it's up to us in the neighborhoods uh, to keep reminding ourselves uh, that I am a legacy person uh, I am connected to something greater than myself and it may not yet appear uh, what I shall be. Uh, but this is one thing I know uh, that when Jesus shows up, uh, I shall be like gold. Uh, I shall be what God said I'll be. Uh, I shall be healed. Somebody holler, heal me, Lord. Uh, I shall be delivered. Somebody holler, deliver me, Lord. Uh, I shall be set free uh, because God. Uh, is helping me. Y'all excuse me, I'm preaching to myself. But God is reminding me that there is a legacy that has been placed in your hands. There is a legacy that has been seated in your heart. There is a legacy that though they tried to kick you out, God says you can't kick out what I have included. You can't cancel uh, what I have affirmed. Uh, do I have a witness in here uh, that can say I am approved? Uh, I am certified. I am God's. Uh, I am God's creation. Uh, I am God's prize. Uh, I am the apple of God's eye. Uh, and because God is with me, uh, I got a legacy worth fighting for. Uh, because God a legacy worth living into come on and hit me with your best shot devil because the God I serve took your best shot and in three days he got up again that means that the best shot of the devil only can hit me for three days but in three days I got to rise I got 
to get up. I got to keep going. I got to keep moving. I got to keep believing. I can't throw in the towel because I got a legacy. I got a promise. I got what I need. So give yourself a high five and tell yourself, I got a legacy. I got a promise. My mind is made up. My heart is fixed. My soul is encouraged. And I will keep going. I will keep serving. I will keep loving. I will keep forgiving. Because I. stand with me I got a legacy we have a legacy and I want you to know this is our legacy amen this feels good to me praise God I mean Pastor Nisha I'm sorry you sick but I'm glad I came because I needed to remind us that we have a legacy you are not the creation of your own hands. We are the creation of God's hands. God gave us to our parents, to those who came before us, and we're living out God's legacy. This church is God's legacy. You, as God's people, are the legacy of God. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. I've had people, we've had people come through this church, atheists and agnostic. They are God's legacy. We have folk come through here, didn't believe in nothing. They are God's legacy. We have folk come through here, they floated in here. They are God's legacy. <laughs> Somebody say amen. All of us. The hardships is a part of the legacy. Why? Because God brought you through that. God brought you through the morning. God brought you through the transitions. God brought you through the disappointments. That is a part of your legacy. So don't hide. Some of us like the hide part. No. Get over yourself. Tell your neighbor, get over yourself. <laughs> Tell somebody else, get over yourself. You're not the only one that had to endure that. The devil get in your head, man, oh, you shame on you. No, no, no. How many of you know all of us have had to endure some hardship, some difficulties, things you did not expect? I didn't sign up for this, God. God said, but I signed you up for it. <laughs> Be like, Lord, don't love me that much then. Amen. Love me a little less. <laughs> don't trust me so much, God. God said, no, 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 I'm building a continuous legacy. And when God gets through with our story, you may not get an Academy Award, but I, I, I think we were at Uncle Don, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Liotta's, well, my great uncle, my dad's uncle's funeral, home going, and what'd he say? There's a crown, I got a crown on layaway. I'm waiting to preach that sermon. I, I, you know, I'm just I'm trying to. Well, how can I squeeze that on in? Say so you may not get a, you may not get an Academy Award, but there's a crown on layaway. What? You got a crown on layaway. So keep going. That's all I'm trying to tell you today. Don't give up. It's gonna be hard, but keep going. God has a crown for you a reward for you. It's just a layaway. That is your legacy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord. We're praying, God, that you help us, hallelujah, to remember that we have a legacy. We have a legacy, God, that is a direct gift from you. And so, God, we treasure this legacy. We thank you, God, that in spite of all that we've done or not done, this legacy remains in our heart. God, we found our way back to you because you were never that far away to begin with. 
You saw in us what we could not see in ourselves. The different parts of our lives, different parts of our journey, it caused us to drift away from you. But today, God, last week, last month, the last few years, God, we find ourselves drifting back into full alignment with you, God. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you that your legacy remains. It remains, oh God, because your spirit abides. It's working around us. It's working in us. It's working through us to accomplish your good will. So bless every person under the sound of our voice today. God, you know the struggles of your people. You know their challenges intimately. So God, I pray that you will wipe every tear from their eye. I pray that you'll be the lifter of their head. I pray that you'll bring peace and joy and strength to them and remind them that they have a legacy of faithfulness, of a life worthy of the Lord. God, that they can lean into the good work that you are doing. And certainly, God, we have a legacy that you always come to our rescue. Rescue us this week. Rescue us in this season. Sustain us. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Just take a few moments, lift those hands, and just wave them before the Lord. Come on, to make the effort and just wave your hands before the Lord. This is our legacy of worship, God, our legacy of praise, our legacy of thanksgiving. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you that you did not leave us or forsake us. Thank you that you held on to us. Thank you, God. Be our strength. Be our help. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands and holler. This is my legacy. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you today. Well, we love you with the love.